Hello, welcome to our charity class fun, mad, chaotic event of some description. Thank you for being in the group. Um, if you are watching this live, <laughs> you are in for some madness. Um, if you're watching this on the catch up video, then also thank you for joining us. I understand not everyone can be here at the same time. Um, if you are here, feel free to say hi or drop a comment. Um, and if there is anything you would like to see during the session, let me know. Um, all that will be shown is your comment, basically. We can't see you guys at all. Hello, Jackie. Um, so there may be people joining part way through as well. So I will sort of do a roundup every now and then to let people know what's happening. Um, what you are pretty much guaranteed is that something will probably go wrong, because <laughs> it always does. Um, so, I don't know, Ripley will fall asleep or Merlin will trip over something or lose a treat in his hair. Something like that's bound to happen. But one of the first things that I want to ask, and I will ask a few times, is is there anything that you would like me to include in this session? Is there something that you would like me to show you? teach it would you like just to see my dogs do it um is there something that you've seen me teach before but you'd like a recap of it or a slight adjustment or you'd just like me to explain why i'm doing something or ask a question um then ask away and i'll keep coming back and forward to check what's going on in the comments there as we're going along i <laughs> know who are you looking at is there someone up there um so the guys had quite a cool walk not that long ago so they're not full of beans but as you probably know they like their training so they will wake up at some point before too long won't you guys hey so you know who we are but just to do a quick introduction for people that haven't uh, trained with me before i've got merlin peekaboo merlin merlin is this one he's the taller of the two with the curly tail and then ripley is the one oh you want to do it as well go on then peekaboo is the one who is smaller, looks scruffier, and typically uh, looks rather confused most of the time. She's not, she just looks it. She's just very good at looking confused. All right, let's just move that round there a little bit and just tilt that up a little bit. So I'm now going to get down on the floor a bit so that we can start doing some bits and pieces. So we've got a bit of an eclectic mix for you. So we're going to do some tricks because tricks tend to be quite popular. Um, tricks, um, you know, you can pick ones that are good for any kind of dog that can be good for puppies, adults, seniors, um, they can be good for any abilities, any training levels. So tricks are quite good. Um, I thought I'd also show you a little bit of um, mimicry training, which is um, do as I do. So there's a protocol you put in place first, and it's a way that you can then teach your dogs that this is what I'm doing and you need to copy what I'm doing. Without the protocol, most dogs will just kind of look at us and think, we are having a great time. Um, now, I do have a fan on, which is in the next room, but I can hear it. If you can hear the squeaking from it, <laughs> it's never such a light squeak, um, Then, and it's affecting how well you can hear me, please do put something in the comments and I will turn it off. I don't know that it's doing a lot anyway, to be fair. Um, so, yeah, so if you can hear a funny noise in the background, that's not me, um, it is the fan. So do let me know, do update me and let me know what's going on. Um, so yes, yeah, so with the mimicry, I really like using it. Initially, we work with exercises that we've done before, and then we can start using it to bring in brand new exercises. I haven't done it with these guys for quite a long time, but I do quite like to do it. Um, so tricks, we're gonna start with just some of my favorite tricks, perhaps, and I'm gonna show you them and give you an idea of how to start them with your own dogs. It might be you've already done them with your dogs and you're looking at progressing it a bit more. Sometimes you can tie two tricks in together to make an extra new trick. Um, so there's always something that you can develop, even if you've got, for example, a trick dog champion, as I know we have a couple in the group, um, and there are two here. There's always something new that you can uh, teach your dogs, okay? So, let's have a think. What tricks can we do, Merlin? Well, there was one right there. Pause up on your arm. So if your dog can do a pause up, if they know how to do pause up on a stool or a step or a small box, you can probably teach them to do a pause up on your arm. Now, obviously, I have got small dogs, so my arm needs to be lower down for them. Good boy, up. So that they're not having to jump up and stretch too high. If you have a tall dog or a heavy dog, then you might need to just stabilise your arm a little bit, you can't see, by holding on. When I do a live, I have to have the phone in portrait mode rather than landscape, so I get less 
<laughs> less width to work in. Um, so yeah, you could put your arm on the side of something so that as your dog puts their paws up and puts the weight on, actually something is, is uh, there to help you uh, take that weight, basically. Rip three paws up. Um, if you have got a teeny tiny, teeny tiny dog, then you could use furniture. So Merlin, can you get up? Boy, pause up. So that makes him a little bit taller and that makes it a tiny bit easier. Pause up to get that pause up. Okay, so you can uh, change it a little bit if you want to. That's a very good girl. Um, use whatever your pause up cue is. And you can see I'm bringing the treat forward. I'm touching my arm and luring them to get them to go up onto my arm, pause up, that's good. Um, and it's quite a nice one because you can then do that anywhere. And once your dogs have an understanding to put their paws up on something, they can put their paws up on pretty much anything, I would say, um, if you ask them for it. So for example, we can then extend that again. Can you go around a bit? Paws up, good. And you can get paws up on your leg. Okay, off you get them, baby. Off. <laughs> She's just getting them off, that's the hard part. Ripley, can you go through and pause? Pause up, that's a poor wrap. Good girl, there's a clever girl, that's nice. And then you can also use other things. So for example, the umbrella that was in the live video uh, talking about today's class, you can use this. Ready, pause up, yes. Excuse me, that's how I treat them. I treat my dogs with my mouth when my hands are full. Oi, don't you nick that, you monkey. Mind your head, don't go around me. Ripley, and paws up, Mwah, good girl, yes you are. So you can start then using other items in case you haven't done that before. Hello, hello Dana, bring them on camera. Apparently I could click to bring you on camera. No, I'm not going. <laughs> but what I will say is, hi Piper. Just have to get that in there. So if you haven't taught your dogs to put their paws up on an item before, then ideally, uh, sorry, pause up on something like this, a pole, is, ooh, I've lit it up now, <laughs> is you want to put part of it on a surface, so I'm just going to put it on the sofa, you can't see it from where you are, and then my other hand can then lure my dog, pause up, good boy, to put the paws up, and then once they've done that a few times and got confidence, then you can hold it with just your hands and ask for the paws up again, if you go straight into that, if your dog's not sure, because it's a new item, you haven't got a way of actually luring them okay so just prop that onto something and then you've got a free hand to help your dogs you could go a little bit lower to start with and then gradually build it up um oh darling do you want to do one <laughs> a little pause going <laughs> um and then gradually hold on pause yeah you're such a clever mm, that clever girl um and you can build it up so the pause up is a really cool one to use so you turn that off and you can then combine that with other things. So for example, if your dog knows peekaboo, you can do a peekaboo and a pause up at the same time. Oh, hello, we've got a long message coming here. Lou just found that request crazy, even with my arm on sun loud, you went nutty and ran around the garden. Okay, try it from a sit. Will you do it from a sit position? You are from pause up, from a sit. Sorry, go around. Pause. Yes, good boy. Ripley, pause. <laughs> pause up, you loon. Pause up. Go on. You're a prat. There you go. First one gone wrong. Darna, Piper is too heavy. She would snap my umbrella in half, and I need that. <laughs> it doesn't have to be an umbrella, it can be other things. You can go and get a big, big uh, log if you like. That would work just as well. Here you go. What about a tray? Nice thick lap tray. Merlin, pause up. Come on, pause up. <laughs> Come on, delicate dog. No. Oh, he says, I can't, that's daddy's tray. He has his dinner on that. Hey, you poor little thing. Come around. Right, pause up. Come on, pause. Yes. Mwah, good boy. So it could be anything that you can hold, you can use to get your dogs to put. Blech their paws up onto it, okay? So we've got legs, we've got arms in the front. You could do a pause up with your dog slightly behind you. Right, go around me. Wait, pause. So you could get them doing it from behind, okay? Quite nice for a selfie, should you be wanting to do something like that with your dogs. Rippers, chippers. Yeah. 
paws. Yes. There's a good. Oh, there's a good girl. Um, yes. Yeah, so if your dog's finding that a bit crazy, ask for a normal pause up just on an item to start with. Do a few pause up. Treat them for doing that so they have an understanding of what you want them to do. Um, and then you could then try get a sit, pause, and then just do one and don't do any more. Okay. So if doing something new or making it different for your dog drives them a bit well what's going on it's just where they're trying to think and they're not too sure what to make of it so go back to doing a version that they do know and then try it once and then stop and then go back to it at a later time okay so yeah from a sit you can also get a one paw one paw up that's a lazy man's paw up from ripley okay all right let's have a look what's happening here retweeted things like that um, okay, so again, if you've got any requests of something you would like me to teach uh, or something you would just like to see me do, um, then obviously let me know and I shall bring that in. Uh, and that's not a chance for you to ask me to do something that you know is going to be ridiculously funny. <laughs> you know my dogs. Hello. So, um, yeah, so we've done some pause up stuff. So we've got, what other tricks do we like to do? Hmm? What do you like to do, Merlin? So both of these guys have slightly different tricks that they enjoy doing. They have ones that they do together, and then they have a few that they like to do that are separate from each other, don't you? So we've got your typical things like your play bells and your twists and spins, um, and your walking backs and things like that. They're uh, they're quite substandard things, aren't they? Hey, we. I'm trying to think. Come on, Dana. Just think. What's well, something that you'd like to see me do that you haven't done with Piper, or you only just started with Piper? Must be something new we can do. So Ripley, Ripley's latest tricks involve. Peekaboo, get out of the way. Yay! And then, oh, there's a good girl. Oh. Walking along like that, something a bit silly, but it depends on the size of your dog. We've got paws up on my lap. Yes, well done, Jackie. You gotta start somewhere, that's a good place to start. Uh, so, while we're trying to think of some different tricks, I'm gonna take you through the mimicry. Ah, thank you starting again <laughs> so John's trying to sort out the fan from making the silly noise or just banging it one of the two um, so with the mimicry you need the protocol first we need to help our dogs understand what on earth we're asking them to do okay if we if I just suddenly did something and said to my dogs right you try it what well, they're likely to just go okay you're a bit weird um, and not actually do anything I've asked them to do so there is a protocol you need to put in place and if you've done mimicry stuff before with me then it doesn't hurt to go back to the foundations um, of the protocol and just remind your dogs what it is we're doing um, so the first thing that we do is think of a couple of things you want three basic things that your dog can do on cue on verbal cue without needing to be lured whatsoever okay so that actually takes a bit more thinking than you might realize because we think oh yeah my dog can do tons of stuff but how many of them things if you oh sorry darling there you go punch man in the face if you just stood like this and ask your dog to do it how many things can they actually do without any extra help head bobs and fingers pointing and the leg coming out how many things can they actually do a lot of the time is not as many as we think there are okay so then you've got to then whittle out the ones that you don't want to have to do so for example, if I ask my two to lay down, they're likely to lay down, but thank you Ripley, but do I want to lay down in order to get them to copy me? Probably not. <laughs> but that's just to give, give you a bit of an idea, okay? So things like pause up, my guys are pretty good at. Um, going around an item, they're pretty good at, aren't you? Yeah. Um, they are good at twists and spins, things like that. So it's thinking of what your dogs can do comfortably without needing any, any extra help from you, basically. And then what we do is we ask them to do it. Um, a few times, praise them. Then what we do is I will show them and then I'll ask them to do it and put in my copy me cue and then praise them for doing it right. So they're learning a new cue at the same time. So at the moment it's all about stuff that they can already do. Okay, that's very nice, but I don't actually want you to do that just yet. So we need them to be in one place. So that's what the platform's for. You don't need a platform. What can we use for a pause up? Plenty of rubbish in this house. Might that do? This will do, will it? Don't do it yet. I haven't asked for it yet, have I? So, to give an example, okay, very good, get off. <laughs> right, just 
white, white, good, white. Okay, pause up, your turn. Good boy, Ripley, pause up, your turn. Okay, not quite what I asked for. That's better, good girl, I've got a lay down chin. Not quite what I wanted. I know the box is collapsing, isn't it? It is. Right, just wait, no, come back, wait, wait. Wait. <laughs> Look at what I'm doing, Ripley, you're looking at my face. Okay, pause up, your turn. Good boy. Ripley, pause up, your turn. Good girl, good. So my mimic word, my copy me word, is your turn. Okay, you might use copy or mimic um, or mirror or echo or whatever you fancy. My words are your turn. That's just what I've always used. So you find something that your dogs can work on. Are <laughs> you very happy, Merlin? And repeat that a few times. Back up. Wait. Look at what I'm doing, Ripley. Ripley. Good girl. Okay, your turn. What's up? <gasps> your turn, Merlin. What's up? Come on. Good boy. Off. Ripley. Your turn. Good girl. <laughs> Yay. And then you try moving on to something different. So another thing that your dogs can do. So, for example, on there, Mel. Good boy. For example, we're going to do just one paw. I haven't asked for it yet. Off you get. Wait. Wait. Stop it. Okay, paw, your turn. Good boy. Ripley, paw, your turn. Oh, two paws. Good girl. Off you get. Good. No, just, I haven't asked for it now. For God's sake. Um, and then you do that again and again. So again, you're just asking for it a few times in a row. Back up. Wait. Paw, your turn. Good boy. Yes, good girl. Good. And so they're starting to hear the your turn and then they're seeing that I'm doing it and that they're copying it as well. Okay. So then gradually we can start taking away the verbal cue and we can just ask them to do it as in your turn. That's all we need to say. Let me just come to the camera. Stop trying to kill Merlin with paws up on a wobbly box. And yet it says, return the love. Mm, didn't work, did it? Um, so, sorry Merlin. I really need some decent equipment really, don't I? I can't believe I've got no paws up stuff in here. I thought I had tons. Bit weird. Weird, isn't it? Right, let's try this upside down so it doesn't collapse. Move it away. So, if I don't kill Merlin in the process, my next thing then will be, just hang on, I haven't asked for it yet. Oh, Wait, wait. Okay, your turn. Yes, good boy. And so he's now doing that, well, one, because he wants to, and two, because I've asked him. Well, you go on there and let Ripley have a go. Ripley, wait. Just hold on. Ripley, you're not looking. Look. Your turn. Ripley, your turn. <laughs> oh, my God. Right, look. Okay, your turn. <laughs> Pause up. Good girl. I think you're half asleep, little bear, aren't you? So Ripley's doing her own thing, that's great. Right, let's move that out of the way. Told you you'd be entertained. Right, come over here. Come out of the way. Come, stop, but wait. Okay, your turn. Yes, good boy. Okay, your turn. Yay! Clever girly. Okay, so then that's how it builds up. And you keep with things that your dog does know, that you don't need lots of luring with. If you're asking them to do something to you, so if you're asking for paw to your hand, then every time you ask for it, you're giving your dog a visual cue. You want, to, ideally, to not have that. Okay, unless you're actually going to do that, and then keep your hand still for your dog to copy, um, doing that is then an extra alert and that's what we should be trying to avoid because ideally your dog should be copying you from what you're doing and then doing it themselves all right so if you want to have a go at that and then let me know how things are going um, please feel free to do so um, there is you can take this so far with your dogs to then teach them things that they haven't done before um, if you have done this with your dogs then I would suggest doing a few basic bits to begin with foundation level stuff just to remind your dogs of what it is that you're doing and then you can start building it up. So one thing that I've sort of did ages ago but I haven't done much with it 
is going around something, and we know that this is going to go wrong because Merlin, for some reason, walks into cones. Don't you, baby boy? Hey, right on there. Good. Where are you? You going to go on there? Okay, so you need to ask them to wait. So that's where the platform comes in. Wait. Not you. <laughs> Merlin. Okay, your turn. Yay! Good. Good boy. So Merlin normally struggles with that one. He finds that quite tough, don't you, baby boy? Hey, go get that. Rippers, on there. Good, wait, you wait as well. Brilliant, Merlin. And Ripley, okay, your turn. Okay, yes, no, you targeted. <laughs> oh dear, oh, Rippers, you're a special dog. Wait. Okay, your turn. Very good, your turn. Yes, come on, yay! So she wasn't sure, she's laid down and given me a chin target on the edge of the cone. So I've just sit, laughed, set her up, done it again for her. And then Merlin's helped by just taking over as normal. Got a mimic pause up in between the crazy. <laughs> well done, well done, Jackie. Um, so yeah, so you start off teaching them what your mimic word means. So your turn or copy, whatever you're using. So you need to show them, ask them for it, add in your word in that order. Then you start showing them and then ask them to mimic without actually giving them the cue word. And then from that, you can start showing them and just say, okay, you copy me. And it can be something completely brand new, okay? So this is something that's going around a cone. I haven't done much with mine at all. And when I did, it was last year sometime. Um, so I'm really impressed with Merlin. <laughs> Not surprised with Ripley, bless her. That's quite normal for Ripper's chippers, isn't it, baby? Hey, clever girly. Um, but it actually can be really, really handy. So I did this. This is one of the ways that I taught um, actually Merlin and Taylor. Ages ago, I wanted to teach them to hold a small bucket with the handle. Um, and I was asking them to hold and Taylor was holding but then wasn't sure what to do once it was on the floor and Merlin literally didn't have a clue who was putting his head in it, he was pouring it. So I literally then did exactly what I've just been doing here. I asked him to wait, I picked it up with my mouth, no word of a lie, and set it down and said, your turn. They both had a bucket, they both picked them up and I took them from them. So that's how I taught them to hold onto a bucket was using mimicry, but they already had the protocols in place, okay? So to teach your dog something brand new, majority of dogs will need to go through this process in stages, otherwise they won't have an understanding of what you want them to do. It does depend on what you're doing. Um, you know, if you want your dogs to suddenly learn to wipe paws, sometimes you can just start doing that and your dog will join in and then you can capture it. Um, however, if you want your dogs to suddenly go um, through a hoop in the garden that you've, they've never seen before, if you go through it, doesn't mean they're going to follow you through. Okay, so sometimes you can get away with not putting the protocol in, but a lot of the time you will need to get them started at the very beginning. Okay, so it is quite fun. It is, it's, <laughs> I do quite like doing this with a lot of dogs. Um, it's just thinking of things that they can do initially that you don't mind doing because people think, oh yeah, my dog can sit, my dog can lay down, I'll do those. And I'll go, yep, yeah, that's fine, no problem at all. They do the sit and they crouch and then they say, right, I'm going to do the down next and they're there <laughs> at the training unit and hardly they're there on the floor doing a down. <laughs> yes, up to you. Um, so likewise, I've, I've seen people inside little tents that we've got there and I've seen them playing with the giant keyboard and stuff like that because that's what they need to do to get the dog to copy because it's mimicry. So think about what you want your dogs to do and also what you're prepared to do first. If you want to go through a tunnel, that's entirely up to you. Cool. So that was a little bit of fun, wasn't it, guys? Let's find your treats. Um, right. So now that we've looked at paws going onto things, we are going to see if we can put chins on things. So, chin target. If you haven't done a chin target, you literally haven't lived, because they're brilliant. Uh, as you can see, Ripley does a chin target for everything in life. Ripley's motto in life is, if your chin can go on it, then it should do. Um, and so it generally does. It doesn't matter what you've asked her for. Chin target, if you haven't seen one of these before, is not that. Chin. Yes, good boy. 
and you teach it by luring your dog's chin to go across your hand and then treat. Yes, good boy. Good, good, good. And Ripper's chippers. Chin. Yes, good girly. Chin. Yes. And chin. And all way. Good girl. So with the chin target, if they can do it on your hand without needing luring, so chin like that, yes, good girl. That's a prolonged one. Um, then we can ask them to put their chin on most things and we can transfer it with use of the hand if needed. So it's then just finding something that's a good height for your dog, all right? So the cones happen to be quite a good height for Merlin's chin. We're probably gonna get paws and all sorts of rubbish because he's used to targeting these. Right, hang on, so I'm gonna use, yep, yeah, good boy. Chin, now listen, chin, that's your nose. That's still your nose, chin. Which chin? Good boy, chin. Yes, chin. Yes, that's better, and chin. Yes, chin. Good boy. <laughs> that was a nuzzle, I think, the last one. So you can start off as I did there with your hand above where your dog's, dog's chin is going to go and get a couple of chins on your hand. And once I've done a bit of repetition, lowering that chin down, you can then move the hand out of the way, ask for it again. Chances are they've got a bit of muscle memory going and they'll just do the same action. And then we can then let them know they've done the right thing, can't we? Yes, we can. So Ripley's saying, I want to go. I like doing chins. So then what your dog can put their chin on is really just finding something that's safe so it isn't pointy <laughs> going into their chin and it's a good height for them okay if it's really really low you might need to ask them to lay down first um, otherwise you're probably going to get poor targets and things like that you go over there so let's give you a... about that is that a good height no it's not really is it all right out the way so we put that there for rippers you go out the way right, off Chin, yes. Chin, yes. Chin, which chin? Chin, yes. Good girl, good. So actually, Ripley could become a Poochin model using her chin. Where's your chin? Yes, good girl. That's nice. And where's your chin? Chin, no. Chin, yes. Good girl. And you can then gradually build that up more and more. If you can get a chin, you can get a sleepy. So a sleepy is then your dog sleepy, sleepy, putting their chin on the floor basically, okay? And you can do that, oh good girl. You can do that again by using your hands to lower, right there. Merlin, I've got it here baby. Good boy, right down. Good boy, chin, no, yes. Chin, which chin? No, yes, and gradually lower your hands to the floor and then you'll get it, or down, you can use food, sleepy, yes, and when the chin goes flat, sleepy, sleepy Merlin, sleepy, where's your bloody sleepy gone, yes, good boy, cheeky monkey, um, and then you can treat them for doing that, so what a sleepy is handy for, is getting the cutest look you can get from your dogs. Wait there. <clears throat> Down. Good girl. Sleepy. Yes. Okay. So it looks really cute. Sleepy. Yes. Good. Aren't you clever? Yes, you are. Um, and it also keeps them still for quite a long time. <laughs> Doesn't it? Hey, is it one of your favourites? So again, that's one that I could use for mimicry, but I would need to then put my chin on something. So hence, I didn't use it as an example. Um, the chin target is also handy if you need to check your dog over for something. So chin, no, chin, chin. Yes, good boy. Checking teeth, chin, chin, chin. Yes, good girl especially if at the vets or with someone they don't know very well because they recognise the chin target, they're focusing on that, everything else going on then doesn't seem quite so daunting for them um, and because we're focusing on what they're doing as well, we're a lot more aware of where our hands are going and, and you know, whether we're approaching the dog nicely or not. So coming from the side and asking for a chin is much better for a dog than approaching head on with our hands out. 
So teaching a chin target or a sleepy target can be so beneficial for so many things, as well as really cool looking tricks and making your dog look super, super cute. Oh, we're gonna have a game. Oh, we're just gonna have a quick interval for a quick game. Yes, we are. Is that two tired dogs? <laughs> so, I don't know, you've got the time. All right, well, we're getting on all right. Um, so, have you got anything you would like me to cover? Would you like me to show you anything, teach anything, explain anything? Um, give you an idea to get you started on something. <laughs> if there's anything about terrier play, you know, it's going to happen, I'm afraid. You can't stop that. So anything at all that you want. If you're watching this on the catch-up, then feel free to add to the comments. Um, and then I can either reply in the comments or I can do another video for this group for you. No problem whatsoever. Um, so let me think of something else while you're busy thinking of things you'd like me to cover. Yeah. Crazy creature, isn't you? Crazy. Oh, have I got treats that you found? I don't know. What are we going to do on the floor? Stop playing. Idiots. You're a pair of idiots, aren't you? Hey, what have we got? Let's just break these up a bit. Because you're getting too much. You're getting fat. Actually, you're not. It's my job. Um, okay, so I'm just trying to think of some things that we can be doing that I haven't done in my classes recently because I don't want to go over all the same stuff over and over again. Um, while I'm thinking, Merlin is going to show you his best feature. Aren't you? Can you bend? Oh, that wasn't a bend, that was a down. There we go. And Ripper's Chippers. Yeah, there's a clever girly. Yay, very good. Um, we could look at some real dog yoga um, exercises if that was something that interested people. Um, real dog yoga is another section of dog training in itself and it's one of the main features is that you teach your dog that when you want to start work you get onto a yoga mat and then when you need a break you come off the yoga mat. So actually you're giving the dog the option of saying yes I'm okay to work or no I'm not. Um, in some cases you're going to have dogs that go, well in that case I'm staying clear of that yoga mat, um, but the majority of the time, because the dogs can choose, they actually then want to work that little bit more. Fun. Um, and then the exercises that are in real dog yoga tend to be um, really good ones that help dogs with communication. So if you have a dog that's perhaps a little bit nervous, um, that tends to get a lot of dogs you know, glaring at them and picking on them, you can actually teach your dog to on cue, look away from the dog or look down um, or blink a couple of times, which gives different communication signals back to that other dog um, and shows them that you're not a threat, it's a calming signal and that can help diffuse the situation if your dog tends to get picked on, for example. Um, some exercises help with confidence, you know, there's quite a few different bits and pieces in there. But on a plus, it also gives you lots and lots of really cool tricks that you can teach your dog. So, um, it's not, it's, I haven't done it for a long time, but I started teaching Merlin to open his mouth like that um, for when I was taking photos. Um, and I started it with Ripley, but unfortunately I was capturing her tongue, so I was just getting for a while. Um, you can teach dogs to close their eyes, you can teach them literally to do that, um, which I have started, oh Ripley's quite funny with this, she loves doing this, don't you darling? Hey, let's put you over there, let me show you the, the turn the head one. Right, get away, <laughs> right down, good girl. Turn right, look right, yes, good girl. If you can see her there, Murden's bottom's in the way, look right, yes, good girl. So literally, I'm just saying look right and doing that, and then she's doing the same thing. And that didn't take her long to learn that at all. So you can actually teach dogs to look a certain direction, just the one direction rather than it being anywhere. Um, you can teach them to do all sorts of really cool tricks and things like that. Um, so for example, um, I'm using yes, my marker word. You could click if you have a clicker. So to get your dog to open their mouth so they don't look miserable on photos, like Merlin does, just hang on, come here. Your mouth's already open. <laughs> yes. And when the mouth opens, we give a yes. Yes, good boy. Yes. Wally. Yes, good boy. 
and then gradually what will happen is they'll offer it more and more without you even need to do anything won't they unless it's ripley and then she just grins at you yes good girl good good yes yes good girl yes yes good boy yes good girl so you do that initially then gradually you'd find that your dog will just get into again repetition they'll start opening their mouth before you do anything and then you yes and give the treat and then when they're opening their mouth after a couple of seconds as soon as you're there with food that's when you start putting the word in so i had started asking merlin for snappers in snapshot for a photo um but again i haven't done it i think february was when we started doing this god i could really use some time at home <laughs> practice some stuff right on there on it good boy good boy aren't you? yes good boy No, I don't want that, sorry. Yes. So I'm still working on the mouth being open. Then it's just offering stuff in general now. No, it's all right. Good boy. Jed. Good boy. <laughs> open your mouth. Snap. Um, I don't want that. It's my fault if you put my hand. Yes, good boy. If you put my hand up, don't I? See down there. Go put your head up. Sit. Yes, good boy, good lad. So sometimes you're waiting a bit. It's called capturing. It's a, it's a version of uh, marker training and clicker training. Um, so if you're doing our clicker marker masterclass, then you will have seen um, videos on shaping and luring and um, capturing. Um, so this is a capture, basically. I'm waiting for him to do it. Sometimes I will. Um, lure it a bit so I'm trying to bring the treat close so that he opens his mouth and then I can capture it um, and then gradually you're just capturing it as you go so real dog yoga excellent I really love working with it I just don't do it as much as I really want to um, it is something else that I wanted to do a class on or a live or something for, for you guys to or for everyone to have a little look at um, if that's something you like let me know and I shall do that as well um, I've got no requests whatsoever it's <sighs> a real shame um, so I'm going to have to think of something else to show you instead. So we've covered mimicry, we've covered real dog yoga, we have covered a couple of crazy tricks. So let's get some different treats now, shall we? Oh, bring out the big guns. Hey, okay. they're good. Silver side of beef. No, no, these dogs are ridiculously treated. Ridiculously treated, aren't you? Hey, let me think. What am I working on with you guys at the minute? All sorts of rubbish. Okay, so they've got a couple of tricks. Let's look at a couple of tricks they're doing for the heel wet to music. So it's something that's actually something I'm working on. Um, so in their heel work to music routines, they are both doing very different routines with very different moves, mainly because they, as I said before, they have their favourites between them, which are very different. Um, so one of Merlin's, quickly, on there. It's not up there, there. Here, I've got it here now. The boy is this. Merlin, no, you've missed. <laughs> right, you go over there, you stop messing around. Wait, wait. Okay, through. He is doing that and then a verse into heel. So that's one that we're working on. So ideally I need him to do a wait first. Wait. And then lure him through and then stop him there. And then I'm asking him to reverse and go back into heel ready to pick him up to do the next part of his routine. What are those treats? The ones I'm using now. Um, they are by Benji Biltong. 
and it is literally um, dried silverside beef. Oh shit. Um, I met the people for this at Crufts and spoke to her um, about becoming a stockist and then obviously that was in, in March and then lockdown happened so all the treats we already have aren't being sold so I haven't bought any for work yet um, but these are Biltong sausages um, free from sugars, ad additives, carbs, artificial flavours and they're high protein, low salt and low fat so Louis would love them um, but they only have one flavour which obviously is, is beef which is the only downside because I like to mix and match protein types. Um, but that's cool. I just don't give this when I'm feeding them beef. That's all. Thank you. How do you teach a reverse? The reverse through my legs. Um, okay, excellent question. So you can have that for a minute. What you do, you start with the peekaboo. There's a few ways of doing it. Um, come over here a bit, baby. Good boy. Start with a peekaboo and then you need a treat in one hand where your heel is going to end up. So my heel will end up on the right, uh, on the left, sorry. So I'm going to have a treat on my left hand. And then there's a few ways you can do it. One is that you literally have a treat on your dog's nose, guide them backwards and then pick them up at heel. Good boy. So backwards. Here. Good boy. The other way is to put your hand on their chest. If they're happy for you to do that and that would literally be hand on chest push and then pick them up next to you there it depends on the dog and then the third way and this is a way that I was shown by Richard doing here to music Richard Curtis um, is again peekaboo and you literally tap your dog on the bum so they look back and go what you're doing and as they come out you then treat them peekaboo good boy What's that? Yay, good boy. So you ideally want them to not be right out there somewhere. You want a nice close up peekaboo like that. Just wait and then tap the bum and then they go into there. And so that is the very first step that you want for teaching um, a verse, reverse through your legs like so. And then once they've got the idea and they can go backwards without needing any extra help, first then they can learn it from further and further away. So we'll back, half, first, good boy, good boy, okay? So Ripley does know this, but she's still learning it with, to get confidence going. And your baby girl, hey, ready? Lissy, yay, good girl. So hers is really, really tiny. And because she's such a tiny dog, she's quite easy to do this method with. Good girl, because she's pretty much there anyway, aren't you? Big boo. Yay, good girl. So when you're doing that, you want to tap them and have your treat ready. So as their head comes out, you can then bring them forward next to you at heel. So remember, I'm teaching this as, in, as if I'm doing heel work to music. Um, and you want your dogs to know how to come back to heel after they've done a position. This stuff breaks up really easily, which is why I like it. Um, and then if they can do a reverse in one direction, in theory, they can do it with you in different places as well. So, then first, back up, back up, wait, half, first, there's a good boy. Um, and you can turn it around. So for those who know Piper, the old English, she can do this from coming this direction. She can go from miles away and come back through Dana's legs backwards um, from, from pretty much any standing direction you can think of. Um, and she really likes it. Dogs seem to quite like going backwards for some reason. <laughs> seem to find it quite funny. Don't you, hey? Um, and so if they can go backwards, then you can do all sorts of weird and wonderful stuff with it. Right, back up. That's not anything, is it? Back, go back, back, back. Half, first, yes. Okay, so you can then ask them to do other bits and pieces on top of that, can't we, hey? Yes, good boy, gotcha, haven't we? Um, or um, a parkour exercise that I actually included in my advanced class, my Thursday night advanced, um, and my Tuesday night advanced, was um, backing up into a section. Um, so well, we actually had a box at one point as well. That we can, Ripley, can you go around? Good girlie, can you get out of the way now? Walk back, 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 back. good girlie. dogs to park themselves basically um, so you can use it for all sorts of stuff so 
I've got reverse or versi meaning come backwards towards me and then I've got walk back that means go away from me walking backwards um, so that my dogs know what I mean. You don't need to have different words. That's lovely, thank you. Um, but it can help. So Ripley's now playing with two cones in case you're not sure what she's got, um, which are ridiculously large for her little face. But she's going to give it a good old try. There you go. Good girl. Mad thing, you mad thing. Um, so yes, I hope that helps answer that question, Jackie, with regards to the reverse. Um, if your dog comes through the peekaboo too far, ends up too far ahead, then you could... I know, you don't want to play with a cone, do you? You're far too sensible, Merlin. You could put something down in front of you. Come around. Peekaboo. So that they put their front paws up and don't go any further back. So then, yes, they're going to be, it's going to be easier for them to go backwards because if they're too far out, they've got quite a long way to go. Um, or they'll just come forward and get the treat from next to you there. Uh, yes, thank you. Cool, excellent, lovely stuff. It's nice to get a question. I, I thrive, I thrive on being asked to do stuff. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm working on for Merlin is that little manoeuvre. Right, my dear. And then, oh, what's Ripley doing? Ripley's doing all sorts of stuff, aren't you, darling? Hey, what are you working on? You're working on some floor floor based things so what i showed you earlier she's doing hopefully come here Peek a bit. <laughs> that wasn't what i wanted close enough <laughs> very cute right come round peekaboo oh peekaboo all right yay good girl so she's in doing that good girl and then we are working on a weave. Good girl, weave. Yes, weave. Come on. And weave. Yes, good girl. And a paw. Paw wrap. Which, no, you don't chin. Wrap. Paw wrap. Yes. Yes, I get gilly. Oh, yes. Lovely little girl. So, several things in. Oh, several things. That was me on your tail. Several things in one go. So, she's doing a different type of peekaboo. Then we're going into her walking underneath me and then she's doing some weaves on my arms which obviously then I can't do a lot of luring and then we finish with a paw wrap or in today's case we ended up with a chin target on my arm. Um, so that's some different things that I'm get off my legs that we're working on there. So as you can see there's a few different skills that are involved with those um, and she knew peekaboo already, so the boob to the floor wasn't too hard. Um, Merlin knows how to jump through my arms and jump through hoops, so jumping through my legs wasn't too hard. Um, it's then stopping him, stopping him turning before he goes through my legs, it's the harder part. Um, for Ripley, keeping her underneath me as I move forward rather than turning to face me was harder. Um, so hence the treat in my mouth, that helps keep her in position. Um, teaching her the arm weave, she knows leg weave, so arm weaves aren't too different. Um, but it can help to start with just circling one arm and then circling the other so they get the idea um, and then that becomes a full-blown weave. Can you go around? No, not around me, around my arm. Good girl, on again. No, that's lovely, good girl. Go around it. Good girl. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice girl. Uh, and I've taught her to pour wrap my leg and uh, you know, poles and things, so pour wrapping my arm is quite a natural progression. So yes, so that's just a way that you can have lots of individual tricks that then become something a little bit more um, and if your dog can do a trick on one thing you can then ask them to do it on something different um, and that progresses it and it can make it look quite nice and look quite different, can't it buddy, hey? So if your dog can pour wrap, if they can pour, can't break that bit up, you're going to get a big bit now. Right, go then that. Wait. If they can pour wrap something like that, good boy, then there's no reason why they can't pour wrap something else. Okay? So if they can pour wrap that, you could pour wrap a cone. Pour wrap. Wrap. When you finished eating that, wrap. Yes, good boy. Good boy. Don't make me ask you, are you ready? Um, you could then ask them to wrap your arm. Then no, not hide your face, I want a wrap. Yes, good boy. 
good boy and then again you can build it up to all sorts of different things if you wanted to that rat could become um, a hugging Ripley so that might become a trick that they do together um, I could ask him to go out to something and put his paw around it so I did some pictures recently with our estate agent with Omega Homes um, with their for sale sign in my back garden and Merlin and Ripley both went out to it and put their paw around the pole that we'd stuck it on um, so it kind of looked like they were holding up the for sale sign, looked quite cute and that's just a paw wrap, it's just exactly the same thing it's just I showed them quickly a couple of times close up and then I could get out the picture and sent them to it and then they hold the position because they've done it so much um, so yeah, so tricks that your dogs already know that you might think actually aren't that exciting so give paw, a lot of dogs know how to give paw but you can develop that into something that suits your dog better um, and build it up more and more and more okay so for example there's um, a trick that um, Piper and Merlin both do in their Ghostbuster no it's not a Ghostbusters actually they do it in one one of their routines where Piper does kind of a it's called a scaredy cat like this but I don't want Merlin doing that too often so instead he will do that okay little paw wrap and so they're both using their paws on our legs but they're doing whatever works best for them individually um, to help them out basically so we are coming up on finishing because I don't think there's going to be any other questions and you're probably sick to death of hearing my voice by now those that have been teaching training with me throughout lockdown <laughs> keep hearing me doing these blooming lives um, so I just want to say thank you very much for watching if you've watched in the live then that's lovely thank you for keeping me company thank you for commenting or asking questions etc um, it really does make doing a live so much better when you've got a little bit of conversation going um, if you're watching this in the catch-up then welcome thank you for watching um, and again questions you can pop in the comments and when I get to them I'll be able to then answer those um, and if you're not on Facebook so you're watching this video as a link separately then obviously you won't be able to ask a question in the comments you can of course pop me a message through on email or Facebook um, or on text or on WhatsApp um, or Instagram or Twitter um, about what we're doing today and I can answer that for you if you haven't heard of dots before uh, which is dogs on dogs on the streets then please do go and have a little look at their website or look at their Facebook group or their Twitter group um, because they do some really amazing work. There's a couple of, of groups, a couple of charities that work with homeless people and their dogs um, and they've just been really brilliant throughout the pandemic. They're great anyway, but um, at the moment they're obviously having to wear all the PPE that they can even though it's not official stuff. Um, so you know finding masks that they can wear and gloves etc so that they can be treating animals and helping them and looking them over um, aside from giving um, food and water and, and blankets and things to to the dogs um, if an owner um, goes into hospital or something then the dog gets to go and stay at their sanctuary for a little while so they get a bit of respite before being reunited with their owner if the dog needs um, emergency uh, medical attention they have to go to the vets then that's all covered by dots and they help with their recovery and they help with transportation um, and they, they just care so much about the, the dogs as well as obviously the owners and you can see the owners care for the dogs so much um, and the dogs want to be with their owners they don't want to go to a new home um, they want to be with them and they're happy and they're healthy um, or they get coats a lot of the time as well a lot of coats are donated um, and uh, they, they just do some really great work so I just wanted to try and do something to give a little bit to them um, it might not be much you know I know not everyone can, can, has got much at the minute and I certainly haven't um, but if you can give 15p, 10p, anything then it will go towards something that they can use and they do appreciate it uh, right I can see that another couple of messages popped up while I was talking there yes thank you thank you you're very very welcome Jackie um, and everyone else watching thank you very much for watching thank you for liking sharing and anything else that you've done towards this it really does mean a lot um, and I hope that you either enjoyed all of that session um, or you at least enjoyed some of it and obviously if not then you now have the end to look forward to 
So, thank you very much. Take care of yourselves. I hope you've had a good weekend and I will speak to many of you in this future week. So if you need me, you know where I am. But for now, myself, Merlin and Ripley are going to sign off and leave you to your Sunday evening. Take care of yourselves and thank you.